Okay, welcome to part three, uh, Kolmogorov complexity. Um, this um, is about the most theoretical I think this course is going to get. Um, so the Kolmogorov complexity of something, usually in, before when I said complexity theory, I was talking about um, time or space complexity to solve a problem. So Kolmogorov complexity is different, it's, it's called algorithmic complexity. And what it means is you, you have generally, okay, so you, we can think of it as you get a string and you want to know what is the shortest program that generates that string. Okay, so, so the sh smallest program that will print that string out. Okay, so I mean, um, in C, Obviously, it's going to be if the if the string let's assume that it's an ASCII string, then how many characters does the C program have to be to print out um, what? So actually, I'm going to write Kolmogorov complexity. Um, or so this means, for example, what is the smallest, what is the length? Actually, it doesn't really matter if you're talking about the length or if you actually want the program. But um, yeah, let's talk about what is the length of the shortest program that prints. Hello world is not a great example, but let's use it. So the quotes are not in there, and the uh, question mark is not in there. So I just want to print hello world. What is the length of the, the shortest program that prints hello world? Well, you might think it depends on what programming language you're using. Okay, so this is this is a valid thing. You can see that this is kind of an interesting thing because um, this is, for example, I work in data compression, and this is a big thing in data compression. We want to you, you take something and and compress it. So that means come up with a small representation, so, which. <clears throat> um, for example, if you if it's a program, you could think of it as some sort of self-extracting file. Okay, so so this is something people care about. Okay, and you might say, well, um, in C, this is like include standard io.h int main printf hello world return uh, return zero is usually is customary and close okay so in C, the, the, this is probably, I don't know if this, this is actually the shortest way to write this in C, but um, looks pretty short. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, da, 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 da. it's like, I don't know, like what? 30 characters, 50 characters, something like that. Okay, so that's, if we're talking about C and we get some string, I'm trying to point this thing as a, as a mirror, so here it is. 
So we're trying to print hello world. Um, maybe that's the shortest C program that prints hello world. Now, if this were much longer, then, for example, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, blah, 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 blah. Then you could compress it because you could write a for loop. Right? You wouldn't write out, actually print 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, blah, 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 blah. and then also be printing out 98 bottles of beer on the wall. What you would do is say, okay, for i equals um, 99 down to 1, print uh, I print like integer da -da, bottles of beer on the wall and then print I and, and give it I and then it would just it would loop so you could obviously compress it so so that the the algorithmic complexity of hello world is is probably about the size of hello world although um, but the the but so, so you can see that this is this is something you'd like to be able to talk about how, how compressible is a string so um, People talk about music. How compressible is music? Certain um, uh, so I mean they have examples of like the na 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 ba na is is like yeah that's very compressible. Um, so over and over again. So. Um, Okay, um, so this is Kolmogorov complexity. So one of the things you might be uh, thinking about is like, yeah, Travis, why did you choose C? Why didn't you choose something nice like Python where it would be like print hello world, which would be much shorter because you don't have, and, 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 but at least I didn't choose Java where it'd have to be like uh, public static void main, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, I mean, there are, there are, I mean, basic, old Commodore 64 basic um, would just be like print 10, print, uh, print, hello world. Um, but so one of the things, so before we go on and, and, st and start talking about measuring this stuff, we have to talk about uh, what language we want to use. And, and actually, it doesn't matter that much. Um, and this is so. So this is one of the things when when you, somebody asks me about like, ooh, in algorithms, which programming language should we use? It's like, yeah, I don't care. I mean, you should use C because everyone should use C. But um, apart from that, I mean, it does matter. You have to make sure that your TA can read what you write. But um, other than that, uh, first let's talk about a notion called Turing equivalence. So all reasonable languages all reasonable programming languages are turning equivalent. Which sounds very fancy. But that just means that you can implement a Turing machine in them, apart from the fact that the Turing machine has an infinite tape, and you can't actually impl implement an infinite tape in C because you have things like, well, you, you, you don't have more than like 64 bits for a pointer. So it doesn't hold infinity. But apart ignoring that, you could easily, uh, you could implement the, the, the finite state control of a Turing machine as a big switch statement. So you just you just loop and and whenever so at each point you the, the, you're in some state you read some so you have some character on the tape and then you go through the switch statement and it will say if you are in this state and you see this character then this is what you do you write something and you move in some direction and the the list the, the tape is just implemented as a doubly linked list and when you get to the end uh, to make to make it look like it's infinite then you just malloc some memory and you, you, you declare another tape cell, a node in your doubly linked list, and you just glue it on the end and then fill it in with the I haven't read this yet character and then move on to it. And then, so, so you can write a Turing machine in C in, in a few minutes. Um, and you can, in 
fact, write a Turing machine in any decent language, in any reasonable language. Um, and in lots of unreasonable languages, you can write, I think you can write Turing machines in PostScript and PDF and Excel and various other things that were never actually meant to be really used as powerful programming languages. You can still write a Turing machine. And so by the Church Turing hypothesis, you can do anything that we can compute. You can compute in those languages, right? So, so languages are, um, and actually the algorithms and data structures don't change that much between programming languages. So what I'm trying to teach you, it doesn't really matter what language you're using. Um, I just like C because it, it's nice and fairly close to the machine. So it's fairly close to something called the RAM model. So the, the description of how the algorithm actually works on the machine translates pretty easily into C. Whereas if you get into libraries and things like that, then, then it can sometimes, when you're learning this stuff, it can sometimes obscure what the, what the computer is actually doing. But officially it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, but then you would say, yeah, but, but look, we were just saying that C, look how big it is. Whereas Python, it's much smaller. And, uh, and I say, yeah, okay, but, um, suppose that you wanted to write in Python. Okay. So you want to do this course, all of the programming assignments, you know how to, you know how to write in Python and you love Python and you never want to write in anything except Python. And I say, okay, but my course, my rules, you write in C. If you don't, if, if you, you turn in programs that don't compile with GCC, zero. Um, okay, so I, didn't, I, don't, I don't do that. I think maybe after this I should, um, because now I'm going to teach you how to get around that. So what you do, um, if you want to write... Uh, you want to write in Python, and I want you to write in C. What you can do is write a Python compiler in C. Actually, you could probably find a Python compiler in C by looking on the internet. Um, and then, so if you take, so, so Turing equivalent. So if you take a Python compiler. C and you add to it. So this is a C program. Okay, it will compile with GCC. And then you add to it a Python program. So this is written in, written in Python. This is written in C, but this is written in Python. But then if this compiles, you can run this on this. You can, you can use this to compile it. I mean, you can, there is a way, it's not that hard, to, to, like, to, uh, to hook these together in such a way that the whole thing is a C program. So this is just a string. This is an argument to this. This is compiled in C, and then it compiles the Python for you. And so it's a C program. So officially, so you're following my rules. You actually have to write in C a little bit because you write the Python compiler in C, but you only write it once. And then forever after, you write Python programs. And just before you turn them in, you, uh, you prepend this uh, Python compiler written in C and turn them into C programs. So um, what does that say about the length of the program. Well, you're writing in Python and I'm, and, and maybe, and, and you would say, yeah, but it's much nicer. It's much shorter in Python. Well, it's not that much shorter. It's not more than an additive constant because it's not smaller by more than the size of a Python compiler written in C. So say a Python compiler written in C takes how many bytes? Say it takes 
a simple one. I don't know, a few thousands, hundreds of thousands, like how many lines would this take? I don't know. But you could, I mean, it would, it would be like kilobytes, like maybe a couple of megabytes. Um, not that big. I mean, it's constant. I have no idea. It's been ages since I wrote compilers. Um, but this is an additive constant. So now you could say, oh, my Python programs are so much smaller. And I could say, yeah, but there are C programs which are not th which do the same thing, which are not that much bigger. And you would say, oh, no, they're not. C is so, so clumsy. And I would say, yeah, well, they're only, I can, I can get a C program of your Python program by, pre by prepending a Python compiler in C. So actually, the power of the language doesn't really change by, because they're Turing equivalent. As long, as long as they're they're Turing equivalent, and the length of the programs doesn't really change. Okay, so we can talk about for a string, what is the length? We just pick some programming language, Turing machines, C, SAT. No, let's not choose SAT. No, because SAT's a, it's also a decision language. So actually, okay, so I mean, before I said SAT is, is yes or no, but I mean, you could, you could, if you change it to be a not decision language, like if it, maybe you could actually, you can program in almost anything. Um, so Python, Java, Perl, C++, Haskell, Basic, Go, Rust, Ruby, blah, 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 blah. like pick whatever. Um, and now we want to talk about strings and their complexities. Um, so what is the smallest program that outputs this string? Okay, ignoring the program language. Um, that's not computable, okay? And we're going to prove that with the diagonalization in the remaining eight minutes of the class. Um, so the formally Kolmogorov complexity or algorithmic complexity is incomputable. So let's suppose, and how are we going to do this with the diagonalization, that mathy judo thing? Um, so remember, it's a proof by contradiction. So, I assume we have, okay, so let's, I mean, I said the language isn't, but for concreteness, let's assume that we're working in C. We have a C program, a C function, Oh no, I'm going to write that in bed. Let's call it Casey, Kolmogorov of complexity. Um, char, char pointer, what are we going to call the string? Um, what's a good name for the string? Um, S. Okay. Casey takes S. returns the length of the shortest C program that prints S, string S, and then stops. Okay. So, um, 
So this would be great because I mean, this would be fantastic for data compression because I have five minutes. I have to do this in five minutes. That's going to be a bit challenging. Um, because we would we would have a file and we would just give it to KC and we would say, okay, I mean, um, actually, if you wanted to compress it, you actually want you wouldn't just want the length, but you, there's a way where if you could get the length, then you could actually get such a um, you could get the the C program. It would be tricky, but you could. Um, Anyway, you can't, so it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, you can't get the length. So um, let's think about um, what would you, how, how are we going to turn this around and show that you can't do this? Well, it's a diagonalization. We can do this, so we're going to use it to break itself. So what we're going to do is let's let's say um, I just erased this include um, standard IO dot age um, int main and this is going to um, this is not going to take any arguments. And then what we're going to say is, um, well, this is going to be a bit of a pain to, to, to write. I'm going to write something in red here. Um, so we're going to have, we're going to have some S. And down here, Okay, so actually you need a function declaration here, which is going to be, uh, I'm using up my five minutes. Wow. I'm going to have to put int kc char pointer s. Okay, so this is just, remember, this is just the, the function declaration, which lets me have kc down here. Okay, and then I'm going to have int main, or I can assume, like, I could actually put the function in here, but, but kc is down here. It's a C program, so I'm allowed to, to have it somewhere else. And now I, I don't have that much space. But I say, okay, there's char pointer s. Okay, so what am I going to do? Um, I don't have... So this is going to I'm going to fill something in here. Print f. Uh, return zero. Okay. So what am I going to put in here? So what it's going to do is start with that, do something here, and then print print the contents of this string and return. So this part is going to, this is where I'm going to have to sort of use pseudocode. Loop through all possible strings in increasing order by length. And on each call KC. Okay? So this wouldn't be that hard to write, but it's harder. It, I mean, I could, you could do this. It's not that bad, but not in the time remaining in the lecture. And so you would actually get, kc is a c function. 
And so this has a finite size. And so this whole thing is going to have a certain size. Okay. So now you're going to take that size and say, let's suppose that the, the length of this whole program plus a little bit of slack for something I'm about to add, say that this whole thing This whole thing has length L. Okay? Plus, I mean, I'm also going to include this thing that I'm about to, to add here. But then you say if KC returns a number bigger than L, then print S and stop. Okay? So actually L is the, this whole length, which includes the size of writing L, but Writing L takes how many characters? Well, it takes log L. So, so it doesn't, writing L is not like, oh, but if, when I write L, it makes L go up by a lot. It's like, no, it doesn't. So you could just take L and double it, and then you'd be able to write L, because you now have an extra L characters, and you only need to increase the, the number of characters write L by one. So this, why is this? Um, why is this a counterexample? Well, because it's going to uh, print a string. It's a program of, of, of length L, which prints a string, which KC says has Kolmogorov complexity bigger than L. Right? So you just loop through until you find one there has to be, I mean, Casey, it can't, it can't say every string is, has small complexity just by counting arguments because there aren't enough programs. I'm over the time limit. So, you, so I mean, you, if you look, if you consider all possible programs of length something, and then you, there, there are a finite number of those, and so only a finite number of strings can have Kolmogorov com complexity up to that. So as you, as you go on, if L is correct, then it has to sometimes use bigger and bigger numbers. It has, to, it has to say some strings are just very complex. And so eventually, if you're just sort of running through, you're waiting through, you're looping through all the strings until you get to one where it says, yeah, this is complex. And then you say, mm, no, it's not, because now I print that. And now I have a short program, which is just output that number. It's sort of like um, this argument about uh, the smallest boring number. I mean, mathematicians, this is a very nerdy humor, but, and I'm going to try to end within 30 minutes. So you know how mathematicians say there are no boring numbers? Because suppose there, suppose there is a boring number, suppose there were a boring number, so you use the subjunctive, then there would have to be a smallest boring number but the property of, of being the smallest boring number is an interesting property. Okay? This is kind of the, the, the same thing. Sort of. Um, okay, so now uh, in the last few seconds before I, I actually hit 30 minutes, I'm going to tell you that I'm never actually, I mean, I might put a bonus question or something on about Kolmogorov complexity. I just tell you, I, I'm not actually going to test you on this. It's not something you need to know in 30 year algorithms. I'm sorry if you just like if you if you really needed this half hour. It's something I think you should know. It's something computer science should know about. Uh, some computer scientists, um, but it's not part of of Dow's third year algorithms curriculum, as far as I'm aware. It's not one of the learning objectives. Um, it's just that you will probably never see this stuff. Um, and uh, 
so I mean in half an hour now you know something like people talk about algorithmic complexity you'll know what they're talking about um, so thank you for watching um, I hope you you found it so and it's also it's an example of a diagonalization um, which I think you should I mean you should know that there are some things that are not computable and there are some natural things like what is the length of the shortest program that does this that's not computable by a diagonalization the halting problem things like that so the limits this is this is sort of the edge of computer science it's not like the edge beyond which you know it's slow it's, it's the edge beyond which you do not go you cannot go there is nothing I mean, it's weird because the halting problem is definitely, remember, um, remember back at the, uh, at the beginning of the course, I had that, that cartoon that said, you know, and it has to say whether the photo was taken in a park and, um, and the person says, yeah, that's easy, a GIS lookup. And then, and then the other, and then the boss says, um, and it has to say whether the picture is of a bird, and the person says, yeah, that's going to be really hard. I need a research team in five years and something like that. Um, well, and I said, OK, that's because it's kind of a messy problem. It's like a, not clearly a yes, no kind of thing. Well, this is saying, I mean, this whole lecture was about there are things where the answer is well defined. I mean, the program either does stop or it does not stop. It is not like move, it sort of stops. It, it yes, it does or no, it doesn't, but you can't find out. I mean, it, it, I mean, if it does, then you can find out. You just run it and eventually it will stop. But there's in general, there isn't a way that we can tell that it doesn't stop. Even though I mean, it's the yes or no answer, but we can never get it in general. Um, and this kind of thing, like Komarov of computability, we would like it, but we can't get it. Um, we can, we can actually, you can't even approximate it, but we use sort of stand-ins for, for various things. Um, so machine learning would really love this. Uh, I mean, this would, this would be, ask, take a machine learning course and then ask your professor about Kolmogorov complexity. Um, okay, sorry, I'm, I've gone way over time. That's the risk when my camera doesn't actually quit. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, after the Canada holiday, Canada Day holiday, <coughs> I should cough into my elbow, I know, sorry, but I'm in my own apartment. Um, I'll wash my hands before I go out. Um, we will be back to normal stuff like Dijkstra's algorithm and graph algorithm and fun stuff like that. Um, okay, have a good weekend. <laughs>